Beyond 2040 and welcome to a very special edition of the Progressive Rock and Metal album review series. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the legendary catalogue from one of the greatest, most iconic and legendary bands in the history of music, the one and only legendary rock band Rush. And this is the fifth and final part of a five part special where I have discussed each decade of Rush's albums. So for part one, I discussed all of Rush's albums from the 70s. Part two, all of Rush's albums from the 80s. Part three, all of Rush's albums from the 90s. Part four, all of Rush's albums from the 2000s. And for today's edition, which is a follow-up to the last one that I did, where I discussed all of Rush's albums from the 2000s. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Rush's live recordings. Now, as great as Rush sound in the studio, and they're absolutely amazing. I personally feel, for me anyway, some of Rush's best work has been the live stuff, and anybody who has seen Rush live up close and in person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The band live really take on a life of its own. And for me, some of the songs from their studio albums sound even better live. In fact, some of my favourite Rush songs have been the live versions. You know, there's just something about Rush playing live it's just absolutely unbelievable to the point of godlike. And for three guys live to create such a gigantic sound, it's just unbelievable. And sometimes you forget that it's just three guys. Sometimes I'm easily convinced that I'm sure that's a band of five or six. It just sounds so big and so massive. And as someone who's seen Rush on two occasions, which for my money, some of the best shows I have ever seen, they were just unbelievable. And some of my favorite Rush albums are the live recordings. And Rush have put out a lot of live stuff. And for me, it doesn't get any better than Rush Live. It's an experience that you really have to be there to appreciate it. And I've been going to gigs and live concerts now for almost 27 years now. And I don't think I have ever seen a band quite like Rush. I mean, sure, I've been to see some of the greatest bands in the history of music from Black Sabbath to Dream Theater to Judas Priest, to Riverside, to Opeth, to Transatlantic. They're very close to Rush in terms of affection. They're very, very close. But I can't think of any band except maybe ELP that really capture the energy of a live performance quite like Rush. Yes, there are other bands who are equally as good as Rush. Some have been doing it maybe a little bit longer, but for me, there's no better live band in the world quite like Rush. So, as I said already, for the fifth and final part of this five-part special, I'm going to be taking a look at Rush's official live albums, which is a total of 11 recordings. And as always, I'm going to be talking about each one individually and choosing which one I think is the best one. This is going to be a hell of a challenge, but at the same time, a lot of fun. There are some fantastic live albums here. Obviously, there are some that are a little bit better than others, but I think when you go through Rush's live catalogue of albums, there's some tremendous stuff here. And each live album really captures the band at different points in their career. So, you know, as I said at the beginning of this five-part special, Rush started out as more of a hard rock band, 
then they evolved into more of a progressive rock band, then more into a synth-driven band, and then went back to their roots to a more of a traditional hard rock guitar-oriented band, but in a more modern style. And as I said, when you go through Rush's live albums, you can really hear how much the band are evolving with each live album. And it's quite the evolution, to say the very least. It's an amazing ride. So let's get straight into it. Let's start with the first one that kicked all of this off. And this one came out in 1976. And this one is looked upon as a classic among Rush fans. And this one is called All the World to Stage. So All the World to Stage is a live recording that came out in 1976 during the 2112 tour. And it's fantastic, it's raw, it's gritty, it's hard hitting and packs a hell of a punch. And this is a band really starting to hit their stride and really starting to climb up that ladder to becoming one of the greatest live bands of all time. And for me, this is Rush at their heaviest, at their most rock and roll, you name it, it's all there. And for me, even though this came out in 1976, Rush have never sounded better. It's really, really good, very enjoyable. Geddy Lee, vocally and musically, he's just on top form, delivering unbelievable gnarly bass work. Alex Lifeson is just a machine on the guitar in full shredder mode. And Neil Peart, the professor himself, he's just all over the music with incredible drumming, as you'd expect from one of the greatest drummers in the world. So a lot of the material that's performed and featured on All the World to Stage is from Caress of Steel, Fly by Night, 2112, and the band's self-titled debut album. And this is one of the first, if not the only live album, at least till years later, that featured pretty much most of 2112 performed in its entirety. Now, 2112 was a 20 plus minute epic that was featured on the album of the same name, which is where this album is performed on tour. But instead of it being 20 plus minutes, it's now condensed down to 15 minutes and 45 seconds. So it's near enough the whole piece performed in its entirety. Obviously, there are some changes, but it's pretty much most of the whole piece performed in its entirety. And it's a fantastic concert. And as I said, Rush were really starting to hit their peak around this time. So tracks we got here are Bastille Day, Anthem, Fly By Night, Slash In The Mood, Something For Nothing, Lakeside Park, 2112, All Five Parts, Bitor and the Snow Dog, which gets a real nice workout at 11 minutes long. In the end, Working Man slash Finding My Way, which is a nice almost 15 minutes long. And What You're Doing, so a really good, fun, hard rock live album and very enjoyable and a great place to start if you're looking to get into Rush's live stuff. So the standout tracks for me are Bastille Day. Anthem, Fly By Night, Slash In The Mood, 2112, Bital and The Snow Dog, Working Man, Slash Finding My Way, and What You're Doing. A great classic hard rock live album, and a great place to start if you're looking to get into Rush's live catalogue of albums. So there you have it, All The World To Stage, the perfect place to start if you really want to experience what Rush are all about from a live point of view. There's no better place to start with this one. So there you have it. All the world's a stage. Excellent live album. And what a way to kick things off for a band that was really on the rise, in my opinion. Tremendous stuff. So we move on to the next live album. And this one came out in 1981. And it's looked upon as a very special live album 
for a lot of reasons, mainly because of the time period and the album that the band were touring at this time. And this one is called Exit Stage Left. So by 1981, Rush had evolved into one of the hottest bands in the world as they achieved international worldwide success, gained lots and lots of exposure and gained a whole new fan base. And they were touring Moving Pictures, which was their newest album at the time. And it's rightly so looked at by Rush fans as the greatest album that the band had ever put out. And you could kind of look at Exit Stage Left as a retrospective for the band. It features material from 2112, Permanent Waves, Moving Pictures, of course, Hemispheres, A Farewell to Kings, Caress of Steel, Fly by Night, and the band's self-titled debut album. It's all here. And while I do enjoy this album, I wouldn't really call Exit Stage Left one of my favourites, mainly because I have always had an issue with the production, especially the mixture of the bass. I just think the bass sounds too gnarly, at times too overpowering to the point I can't even hear the guys. And I just don't think it sounds good. I mean, I remember the vinyl sounded terrible. And then when they remastered it and released it on CD years later, it sounded even worse. And it's a shame, really, because if not for the production of this live album, this could very well be my favourite. And it's such a strong outing for a band that are really on the rise and on a real roll. The production loses a few points with me, but the performances, the musicianship, still good. But unfortunately for me, Exit Stage Left is not what you would call one of my favourite Rush live albums. I feel that Moving Pictures 40, which came out years after, to me, that's the real Exit Stage Left live album. And I definitely feel that the production for that concert was redeemed and completely transformed for the better. And that will get talked about on this series for another time. So anyway, let's have a look, shall we? So there we are, there's the track listing, and there's the pictures of the guys from the tour. And I love how they put all the album covers together backstage. I think that's really cool. So the tracks we got here, as I said, it's pretty much like a retrospective of the band's history. So we got The Spirit of Radio, Red Barchetta, YYZ, which features a tremendous Neil Pitt drum solo. And Neil Pitt's drum solos would become a big fixture of Rush's live shows going forward. A Passage to Bangkok, Closer to the Heart, Beneath, Between and Behind, Jacob's Ladder, a beautiful solo acoustic piece by Alex Lifeson called Bruins Bane, which is more of an intro to the trees, Xanadu, Free Will, Tom Sawyer, and Lavella Stregiato. Great choice of material, great performances. As I said, the production lets it down a little bit, but I still like listening to certain tracks. I think some of them sound really good. But as I said, I think the movie pictures 40 really makes up for this one. But as I said, still a good album. Still enjoy it, but the production, eh, not so much. So standout tracks for me are YYZ, Jacob's Ladder, Bruins Bane, The Trees, Xanadu, and La Villa Strangiato. Good live album, as I said. Production-wise, eh, not so much, but not one of my favourites, but still I have a lot of respect for this one, but it's not one of my favourite live albums. I think All the World to Stage from a production point of view, maybe just a little bit better. But I understand and respect that Exit Stage Left has its place in Rush's fans' hearts. But yeah, it's not my go-to album, unfortunately, when it comes to the live stuff. Which is a shame, really, because this is Rush at their peak, in my opinion. But it is what it is. So there you have it. 
exit stage left. Highly recommended to all Rush fans. Nice. So we move on to the next live album. And this one came out in 1989. And this one for me could very well be my all-time favorite Rush live album. It's the first one I ever listened to. It's a very special one for me. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. And this one is called A Show of Hands. So A Show of Hands was the band on tour promoting Power Windows and Hold Your Fire and Grace Under Pressure as well. And I think from a production point of view, it sounds amazing. Much better than Exit Stage Left. This sees the band in a different point in their career. So they've now become more synth driven, lots more keyboards involved. And yeah, depending on who you really ask, some fans didn't like this period. But I think the keyboards really helped the band transform for the better and really acted as like an unofficial fourth member of the band. And it's really good here. So the material that's featured on here are material from Power Windows, Signals, Hold Your Fire. Got a couple of tracks from Moving Pictures and Farewell to Kings and Grace Under Pressure as well. But it's a very strong live album. Very glossy sound, very smooth, very clean and sheen. I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. I think as far as live albums for Rush are concerned, for me, this could very well be the best one of all, as far as I'm concerned. I know some people are going to say, yeah, but Exit Stage Left's better. That's the beauty of music. There's no right or wrong answer, as I always say at the end of every review. We all have our favourites, but I think this one stands up pretty strong for me, as far as live albums are concerned. So let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> I love that. And I love the cover as well. There we are. I think really the 80s, Rush really came into their own, became red hot. I know the 70s is more looked upon as the golden age, but I don't know really. I think the 80s, Rush got even better as far as I'm concerned. So tracks we got here are the Big Money, Subdivisions, Marathon. Turn the Page, Manhattan Project, Mission, Distant Early Warning, Mystic Rhythms, Witch Hunt, The Rhythm Method, Drum Solo, love it. Force 10, Time Stand Still, Red Sector A, Closer to the Heart. I think this is a really good live album. And as I said, this is the one I listen to the most. I just think it's very raw, very edgy, hard hitting, very smooth, very sheen, polished. It's all there. I think it's really, really good. Neil Pierce drums sound amazing. Geddy Lee's voice is just very, very smooth and crisp. Musically, he's on top form. Vocally, he's on top form on keyboards, bass and vocals. Alex Liveson is just in full shredder mode. He's never sounded better than he does here. I think everyone here is really at their peak here as far as a band are concerned. So tra standout tracks for me are the Big Money, Subdivisions, Marathon, Manhattan Project, Mission, Mystic Rhythms, Force 10, Time Stand Still, and Red Sector A. I think this is, for me, my all-time favourite Rush Live album. I think they just sound amazing. And, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one a lot. I really go to this one all the time. And I know some people may not look at this as one of the band's high points. I think... From a musical standpoint, I think these guys have never sounded better than they do here. And it really shows. You can hear it. And I really get the sense with the band by this point, even some of the films I see, they were just having a blast. It really shows. And you can really hear it in the music and the playing. They were just having the time of their life. And I don't blame them. You know, they're at the top of their game, doing very well. I'd be having fun too if I was them. Why not? So there you have it. Rush, a show of hands. Excellent live album. And for me, probably the band's best and my all-time favourite. 
excellent stuff here. Love it. So we move on to the next live album, and this one came out in 1998. And this one is called Different Stages. So this is a free disc set which features the band promoting the Test for Echo album and also features some highlights from the Counterparts tour as well. And it's also got a very special concert that the band performed in London at Hammersmith Odeon in 1978 during the Farewell to Kings tour. And this came out after the band went into a five-year hiatus due to the tragedy that Neil Peart experienced in his life. And for me, this is an excellent live album which showcases different periods of the band's career. And I think it's excellent. I really do. And this one doesn't really get talked about a lot, but I think it's really good. I think the production on here is tremendous. And I think for the band by the 90s, Although with everything that was going on, you know, changes were in the music business and of course things that were going on with certain band members in their life personally, I think Rush still sounded fantastic and just like they always do, they adapt and they thrive and thrive they do indeed here. It's really, really good. And this one, for the first time since All the World's a Stage, We've got a live performance of 2112 performed almost in its entirety. So that's a real nice extra treat as well. So a lot of the material that's featured on here are from Farewell to Kings, 2112, Roll the Bones, Counterparts, Presto. So it's more of the recent albums as opposed to the older stuff. But there's still some older material as well. There's still some classics in here. So let's have a look, shall we? There we go. And this is the Hammer Smith as well, outside the Odeon venue. Let's have a look. This is really cool. Look at this. Woohoo! Look at that. It's like a whole history collage of the band. That is amazing look at that that is where will it end there you go <laughs> and then look at the other side here as well I mean, look at that love that that is that is crazy so that's that was fun <laughs> i love it so on disc one, we've got Dreamline, Limelight, Driven, Bravado, Animate, Show Don't Tell, The Trees, Nobody's Hero, Closer to the Heart, and 2112. Standout tracks for me on disc one are Dreamline, Animate, Bravado, Show Don't Tell, The Trees, and 2112. And then on disc two, we've got Test for Echo, Analog Kid, Free Will, Roll the Bones, Stick It Out, Resist, Leave That Thing Alone, The Rhythm Method, Natural Science, The Spirit of Radio, Tom Sawyer and YYZ. The standout tracks for me are Analog Kid, Roll the Bones, Stick It Out, Resist, Leave That Thing Alone, The Rhythm Method, Natural Science and YYZ. And then on Disc 3, which is the Hammersmith Odeon London performance from 1978, we stand out tracks for me. We, we got Bastille Day, Bicycle and the Snow Dog, Xanadu, Farewell to Kings, Something for Nothing, Cygnus X1, Anthem, Working Man, Fly by Night, In the Mood, Cinderella Man. And the standout tracks for me are Bicycle and the Snow Dog, Xanadu, Cygnus X1, Anthem, Fly by Night, and Cinderella Man. Excellent live album. I think for me, my favourite. Of the three discs is the London performance mainly because my dad was at that concert so that's quite cool but I do love all of the other discs they're really good but I think the Hammersmith performance for me really stands out as a real special moment in the Rush's history books as far as where they would go as a band but can't go wrong here it's all good but 
yeah, different stages live. Doesn't really get talked about enough, but I think it's an excellent live album. And certainly really captures the band at different points in their career. So there you have it. Different stages. Highly recommended if you can find it. It's really good and a real must-have for Rush fans. Excellent stuff. So we move on to the next live album, and this one came out in 2003, and this one is called In Rio. So after a five-year hiatus, Rush returned bigger, better, and badder than ever, and this comes out during the band's Vapor Trails tour, which marked the first time since 1996's Test for Echo that the band had put out new material, and this sees Rush take to Brazilian waters as they put on a red hot show in Rio. And for me, this is the most raucous crowd I have ever heard Rush play in front of. All the fans were singing along to every single note, every single solo. They were even singing along to the words. The red hot crowd. And it really shows you that Rush are just so loved worldwide no matter where they go fans just can't get enough of these guys and a lot of the material that's featured on this live album is from signals grace under pressure roll the bones vapor trails permanence waves farewell to kings moving pictures counterparts it's all here there's plenty of classic material, new and old, for Rush fans to get their teeth into. And for me, this is a really good live album. And the production on here is just tremendous. Really is. So let's have a look, shall we? The Free Amigos. Great stuff here. So let's have a look. So we've got a little bit about how the band came back. It's all provided by Neil Peart. So this is like Neil Peart's return to the stage after everything that happened. So it's really nice to hear his thoughts about what it meant to come back, to reunite with the band and play in front of a red hot crowd. Yeah, it's really good. Neil Peart doesn't really write much notes for these albums, but yeah, it's nice to hear what he thought about coming back after all this time. Some cool shot there. And that's pretty cool as well. And the band just sound absolutely amazing. But they always do. Great stuff here. All good. It's all good, really. Can't go wrong. So on disc one, we've got Tom Sawyer, Distant Early Warning, New World Man, Rolver Bones, Earthshine, YYZ, The Pass, Bravado, Big Money, The Trees, Free Will, Closer to the Heart, and Natural Science. Standout tracks for me are Distant Early Warning, Rolver Bones, YYZ, Big Money, Trees, and Natural Science. And then on disc two, we've got One Little Victory, Driven, Ghost Rider, Secret Touch, Dreamline, Red Sector A, Leave That Thing Alone, O Bus Batterista, Resist, and 2112. The standout tracks for me are Ghost Rider, Dreamline, Red Sector A, Leave That Thing Alone, O Batterista, Resist, and 2112. And then on disc three, we got Limelight, La Villa Strangiato, where we get a hilarious moment with Alex Lifeson. The Spirit of Radio, Bytor and the Snow Dog, Cygnus X1 and Working Man Medley. Standout tracks for me are La Villa Strangiato, Bytor and the Snow Dog, Cygnus X1. And then we got the Board Bootlegs, Between Sun and Moon and Vital Signs. And the standout track for me is, of course, Vital Signs. But... Great live album, great to see the band return, bigger, better, and badder than ever, and hadn't lost a single step. Neil Peart has never sounded better than he does on the drums. Geddy Lee's on the top form, both 
musically and vocally. And Alex Lifeson, he's just burning it up on the guitars. But yeah, excellent live album and a great way to cap off the return of Rush to the live stage. Excellent stuff. So we move on to the next live album. And this one came out in 2005. And this sees the band celebrating their 30th anniversary. And this one is called R30. So R30 marks the band celebrating 30 years together as a band and features material from their entire catalog of albums. So lots of surprises and some hidden gems. And this is a tremendous life set. It's a CD and DVD set. And yeah, this is tremendous stuff. If you really want to see what Russia are all about, this is the perfect place to start and you really get to see how much Rush have evolved from their early days to the present. It's a really good life set and not an easy one to find, but if you can find it, buy it, you won't regret it. So let's have a look, shall we? Look at that. Look at that. Woohoo! Love it. Nice. We've got guitar picks as well. So let's have a look. Look at that, that's great. So we've just got like the production notes here. Some photos from the early years. I love that. That is so cool. Look how young they are. And they were still cool even then. Nice picture of Neil Peter with his big moustache there. So it's pretty much like seeing them all changing over the years from the 70s to the 80s. I like that. That's a really cool shot of Neil Peart there. I think that's a really good picture. Oh wow, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, this is how I first got into Rush you know, around that time. Nice. And there's their catalogue of albums by that point anyway. Great stuff here. Great, great stuff. So, the tracks we got here for R30, we've got the opener, R30 Overture, which is like an instrumental medley of Finding My Way, Anthem, Bastille Day, Passage to Bangkok, Cygnus X1, and Hemispheres. I think that's was really cool just hearing Rush going through their material of the early years as a medley. I think that was really cool. It's got the Spirit of Radio, Force 10, Animate, Subdivisions, Earthshine, Red Barchetta, Roll the Bones. Got a cover version of The Who, The Seeker, Tom Sawyer, Dreamline, Between the Wheels, Mystic Rhythms, De Trommler, Drum Solo, Resist. Hearts Full of Soul, 2112, Xanadu, Working Man, Medley, Summertime Blues, Crossroads, and Limelight. But yeah, it's a great set here, I must say. Really, really great set here of material from their vault. So the standout tracks for me are R30 Overture, Force 10, Subdivisions, Roll the Bones, Dreamline, Between the Wheels, Mystic Rhythms, The Trommler, Resist, 2112, Slash, Xanadu slash Working Man and Summertime Blues, but yeah, it's a great life set. As I said, not an easy one to find, but if you can find it, it's highly recommended. Really, really good. So there you have it. R30, a celebration of the band's 30th anniversary. Excellent stuff. So we move on to the next live album, and this one came out in 2008, and this one is called 
Snakes and Arrows. So this album came out during the band's tour of Snakes and Arrows, and it features material from Snakes and Arrows, as well as material from Permanent Waves, Moving Pictures, Signals, Grace Under Pressure, 2112. It's all there, and it's a really good, strong live album. You know, quite interesting that a lot more new material is featured as opposed to the older stuff, but there's still some old stuff there, but it's nice to see that the new material is taking more center stage, whereas traditionally Rush would play a lot of the older stuff, but they still would sneak in a couple of new songs as well. So it's nice to see that they're concentrating more on the newer stuff, which is a good thing. I like it. So let's have a look, shall we? A uh, cool shot of guys here. Love it. And there's all the production notes. Cool shots of old lurks there. And the three amigos. And there's Pratt, aka the professor <laughs> and there's Dirk love it cool shot there the band there love it absolutely love it so we got on disc one line lights digital man entry noir mission Free Will, The Main Monkey Business, The Larger Bowl, Secret Touch, even got some tracks from Hemispheres as well. Circumstances Between the Wheels, Dreamline, Far Cry, Working Them Angels, and Armor and Sword. So the standout tracks from the are Digital Man, Entry Noir, Mission, The Main Monkey Business, Dreamline, Between the Wheels, great stuff there on disc one. Then on disc two, we've got Spin Drift. The Way the Wind Blows, Subdivisions, Natural Science, Malignant, Narcissism, Into Dear Slag Worker, Hope, which is a gorgeous solo acoustic piece, Distant Early Warning, The Spirit of Radio, Tom Sawyer, One Little Victory, A Passage to Bangkok, and YYZ. And the standout tracks for me are Subdivisions, Natural Science, Witch Hunt, Malignant, Narcissism, Dear Slag Worker, Hope, and YYZ. Great live album, and a band really on a high after coming back from their five-year hiatus and showcasing new material. So by this point, Rush were really red hot and on a roll. And as I said before, when they came back, they became even more bigger and more popular than they were in their heyday. Unbelievable. So there you have it, Snakes and Arrows live. Love it, great live album. So we move on to the next live album, and this one came out in 2009, and this one is called Grace Under Pressure 1984 Tour. And this was part of a Rush DVD box set called Replay Times Free, and this is a bonus disc and this would later be released and reissued as a single disc on its own. But for the purposes of this, we're going to be just purely talking about this one from the live box set. So let's have a look, shall we? So there's a little backstory into the changes from Signals to Grace Under Pressure and the changing of producer and the departure of longtime producer and friend Terry Brown. So this is all like little notes from Neil Pitt, as you can see. <laughs> so 80s. Look at their hairstyles. So funny. Great shot of the guys there. I think this must have been around the time they were doing the promotional film for The Enemy Within. And there we go. 
Oh god. <laughs> what was he thinking? Nice. Very nice. Brilliant. Surprised I didn't sneak the uh picture of himself in the uh zebra suit. And there's the catalogue of albums by that point anyway. Great stuff here. So most of the material on here is from the Grace Under Pressure album. There's a couple of tracks from Signals, Moving Pictures, some excerpts of 2112 and Permanent Waves. So we've got The Spirit of Radio, The Enemy Within, The Weapon, Witch Hunt, New World Man, Distant Early Warning, Red Sector A, Closer to the Heart, and we've got two medleys, one featuring YYZ, the Temple Syrinx, Tom Sawyer, and Vital Signs. And then the second medley, we got Finding My Way and In the Mood. And not bad. Not a bad little set list there. Love the performances here. It just sounds pretty much the same as the studio album. Really, really good. So standout tracks for me are The Enemy Within, The Weapon, Witch Hunt, Red Sector A, and YYZ and Vital Signs from Medley 1 and 2. But yeah, pretty good. Really, really good. I'm not going to lie, the production sounds a little bit flat in some places, but the performances and the music really make up for it. So I'm happy with it. I like it. It's quite a good, very underrated live album. And not an easy one to track down, but if you can find it, check it out. It's really good. So there you have it. Grace Under Pressure 1984 Tour. Great album. Great, great live album. So we move on to the next live album, and this one came out in 2011. And this one is called Time Machine Live in Cleveland. So this was a special tour that Rush put together to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Moving Pictures and features the band performing their classic album in its entirety. And I was very lucky to catch this tour. This was fantastic and a very special treat for me to hear this iconic album played fully. And this was my dad's second time hearing the band play Moving Pictures in its entirety as he went to the original tour in 1981 during the band's Exit Stage Left tour. So great show great performance and a very special treat to hear their classic album performed and i got to hear the camera i played for the first time that was one i was really looking forward to hearing the most and they didn't disappoint excellent stuff and a lot of the material that's featured on here are tracks from permanence waves hold your fire counterparts and we've also got tracks from Signals, Moving Pictures, of course, excerpts from 2112. We've even got little snips of their forthcoming album, which they were working on at the time of Clockwork Angels. And it's all here. It's all here. It's great, great stuff here. So let's have a look. That's an awesome shot there. Look at that. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Nice shot there. One thing about Rush live shows, they were always fun. There we go. There's the production notes here. So on disc one got the spirit of radio time stands still presto stick it out working them angels leave that thing alone vapors b-u-t-b free will marathon subdivisions tom sawyer red bar chitter why i said and limelight and the standout tracks from the time stands still presto stick it out leave that thing alone marathon subdivisions and why I said great great stuff here and then on this too we've got the camera eye witch hunts vital signs caravan 
Moto Perpetuo featuring Love for Sale, O'Malley's Break, Closer to the Hearts, 2112 Overture, The Temples of Serenity, Far Cry, La Villa Strangiato, and Working Man. And the standout tracks from The Camera Eye, Witch Hunts, Vital Signs, 2112 Overture, and La Villa Strangiato. Great live album and a real special treat to hear Moving Pictures performed in its entirety. Excellent live album. Very blessed I got to see this tour and we won't ever see this again. Not in this lifetime anyway. Great stuff here. Love it. So there you have it. Time Machine, live in Cleveland. Great, great live album. So we move on to the next live album, and this one came out in 2013, and this one is called Clockwork Angels during the band's Clockwork Angels tour, and sees the band performing virtually the Clockwork Angels album in its entirety with a string orchestra, which was a very special treat, and I was very lucky to catch this band during this tour. And this would be the final time that I would see Rush perform in London. But damn, what an incredible show this was. Absolutely brilliant. So let's have a look, shall we? That is an awesome shot of the band with the string orchestra. Love it. They're known as the Clockwork Angels String Ensemble. Excellent stuff, really, really good. So we'll take a look. That is awesome. Look at that. That that's amazing. Yeah, love it. And there's a cool shot of the professor smiling away. Got the production notes here. And some more as well. Great stuff there. And then we got the string ensemble as well. So on disc one, we've got subdivisions, big money, force 10, grand designs, body electric, territories, analog kick, bravado, where's my thing, here it is, drum solo, and far cry. So a lot of the material that's featured on here is mostly from some of the band's more later stuff from the 80s. So we're getting to hear lots of not so well-known material get performed here, which I think is really cool. And the standout tracks for me on disc one, which is set one, subdivisions, big money, Force 10, Grand Designs, Territories, which for me is the standout track of the whole first set, Analog Kid, and Where's My Thing. Then on disc two, we've got the whole Clockwork Angels set, Caravan, Clockwork Angels, The Anarchist, Carnies, The Wreckers, Headlong Flight, Drum Bastica, Drum Solo, Peaks Repose, Guitar Solo, Halo Effect, Seven Cities of Gold, Wish Them Well, and The Garden. Nice. Standout tracks for me are Caravan, Clockwork Angels, The Anarch, The Wreckers, Seven Cities of Gold, and Wish Them Well. And then on disc three, we've got Dreamline, The Precursor, Binary Love Theme, Steam Bangers Ball, Red Sector A, YYZ, and The Spirit of Radio, and Tom Sawyer, and 2112. And got some bonus tracks here as well. Limelight, Middletown Dreams, Wicked, The Pass and Manhattan Project, and a couple of these tracks are performed with the string orchestra. Standout tracks for me are Dreamline, Red Sector A, YYZ, Middletown Dreams, and Manhattan Project. Great, great live album. And the band were just really at an all time high. And this would be the final tour that we would see Rush perform a new album. And they don't disappoint here. They don't miss a single beat. And they deliver as always. So there you have it. It's a Clockwork Angels tour. Excellent stuff.
So we move on to the next live album, and this would be the final live album that Rush would put out officially as an active band. And this sees the band celebrating 40 years together. And this one is called R40 Live. So this is a very unique concert for Rush. They would play no new material whatsoever, but they would come up with a very interesting concept. They would play all tracks from their catalog backwards, starting with the most recent track, all the way up to the first track from the first album. And interestingly enough, although this concert covers a large majority of the band's history, there's not much material from Hold Your Fire and Power Windows. Very interesting. And not really a lot of tracks from the 90s stuff. There's a couple, but not as much. Interesting, but still a great strong set nonetheless. So let's have a look, shall we? So R40 is a CD DVD set. So there is the production notes. There's the three maestros in action. And there's some more production notes as well. Yeah, nice shot there of Alex Lifeson. And there's Neil Peart taking the bow for the final time. Woo! Geddy Lee's got some serious hang time on that jump. Wow! Great shot there. Cool throwback to the 70s, like the Farewell to King's Era. Playing the double neck guitars there. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Just being jokers. A cool shot there of the venue. And there they are, the three kings standing together for the final time. And you know it was the final rush gig when Neil Peart left the drum kit and came to the front of the stage. Something he never ever did. So that pretty much was a clear indication that Rush was pretty much finished really. This was their final gig. And what's a fitting final image of one of the greatest bands of all time. Great, great picture. So the tracks we've got here on R40 Live. The World Is, The World Is, The Anarchist, Headlong Flight, Far Cry, The Main Monkey Business, How It Is, Animate, Roll the Bones Between the Wheels, Losing It with FM's violinist Ben Mink making a guest appearance, and Subdivisions. Standout tracks from me on this one are Subdivisions, Losing It, Roll the Bones, The Main Monkey Business, Headlong Flight, and Far Cry. And then on disc two, we've got Tom Sawyer, YYZ, The Spirit of Radio, Natural Science, Jacob's Loader, Hemisphere's Prelude. Cygnus X1, The Story So Far, Drum Solo, Closer to the Heart, Xanadu and 2112. And the standout tracks for me on disc 2 are YYZ, Natural Science, Jacob's Ladder, Hemisphere's Prelude, Cygnus X1, and Xanadu and 2112. And then on disc 3 we've got Mel's Rock Pile with Eugene Livy, Lakeside Park Anthem, What You're Doing, Working Man, and the standout tracks for me are Lakeside Park Anthem, What You're Doing, Working Man. And the bonus tracks are guys, One Little Victory, Distant Early Morning, Red Bar Cheddar, Clockwork Angels, The Wreckers, The Camera Eye, Losing It with Jonathan Dinklage. And the standout tracks for me are The Wreckers, One Little Victory, Distant Early Warning, Clockwork Angels, and The Camera Eye. Great live performance and a fitting final chapter for one of the greatest bands of all time in the history of music. Doesn't get any better than this. And this was the final live performance for Rush. And yeah, that would be pretty much it. The band would be done. 
uh, so they were pretty much finished for good after this and Neil Peart would sadly pass away in January 2020 but what a way to go out at the top of their game at their peak does not get any better than that tremendous stuff R40 love it so after taking a look at all 11 Rush live albums which one do I think is the best one well they're all good they're all different some are better than others but if I had to choose which one I think is the best Rush live album of all time it's an easy one for me it's a very special one has a very special place near and dear to my heart and that is of course a show of hands this is the one that I listen to this is the one I grew up with this is the one I always go back to the most and I think it's just absolutely amazing I think it's a tremendous sound a band at the top of their game and I just love it I just think it's great I know some people would say it's a little bit 80s but I love it I think it's just a fantastic live album and for me it's very very special and I just think it's amazing so there you have it. it's my all-time favorite rush live album a show of hands and the one that i consider to be the best one love it so that's going to be it from me i am going to wrap this up now what's your favorite rush live album is it all the world to stage exit stage left a show of hands different stages Rush in Rio, Snakes and Arrows Live, Grace Under Pressure, 1984 Tour, Clockwork Angels Tour, Time Machine Live in Cleveland, R30, or R40. And which decade of Rush albums do you enjoy the most? The 70s, the 80s, the 90s? Or the 2000s there's no right or wrong answer we all have our favorites and our favorites live albums as well you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the progressive rock and metal album review series and i hope you've enjoyed all five parts with me discussing rush's entire catalogue of albums so until then take care everybody and stay safe and once again as always much appreciated thanks for listening <laughs>